Welcome back to Extra Emerson. In this episode, we're talking about everything related to the marketing and promotion of movies and television. From Dakota Johnson's hilarious press interviews to actors being asked constantly if they'll be in the MCU, and the splitting of films like Wicked into two parts, it seems like studios are trying more and more strategies to get people to see their films. On the topic of Wicked, how do you both feel about movies like Wicked and Dune having two parts each? I got things to say about that Wicked two-parter, bro. Let's go. I think it should not happen. That's one of those movies where it should be one part. You know, the first act of Wicked is a new story. Yes. But then we get to that second act, and it's just, it's basically Wizard of Oz from yeah. a new perspective. And that's not a movie I think we really need. It, I think it could get its job done easily. It's a little bit part. jagged when you split it up like that. I agree. I feel like you have a perfect template on how to do it in like two and a half hours. I don't know if you feel the same way, but. Yeah, I haven't seen Wicked, uh, so I can't speak to like how would it work in like two parts or if it just be a one part movie. I think like the two parter is sometimes like necessary when for something like Dune, for example, because Dune is a very big book that requires a lot of storytelling. Yeah, and very dense. We already saw back in 1984 how like making a movie about Dune into one movie, and it went about as well as my high school years, so. <laughs> All right, Anthony. <laughs> a little bit of Anthony lore so, in today's episode. You know, fundamentally, I think it just depends on the, the project, because, you know, we also had, like, when the YA craze was a big thing. You sure. had H Harry Potter, two, two movies for the last book. Yeah. Makes sense. Hunger Games did not need to be two movies. Divergent, we never even got. Tank. We really know why, yeah, no. Yeah. It's unfinished. That was kind of the last of that. They stopped making those two-parter finales after Divergent. Yeah, it sort of ended it, but then Dune sort of brought it back. It did, bit. it yeah. did. On the topic of Dune, it's been spoken to death, but that popcorn bucket, man. You talk about it a little bit. That's the, the biggest bucket. marketing scheme I've ever seen in my yeah. life. I don't, they're, they crafted it specifically for people to talk about it. And it worked Went phenomenally. Went completely viral, obviously. And that happens all the time. Yeah. You know, people, like, studios, I guess, will make just heinous, heinous marketing stunts, you know? Like, the Frozen diapers, the yeah. Cars diapers. Uh -huh. A lot of diaper, diaper tie-ins. They, they make them, all, there's like two or three, like, you'll get Mickey Mouse on the Huggies. Yeah. Well, that's just like, you know, cross-promotion, like, brand deals. Sure. When it comes to, like, viral marketing like say the dune popcorn bucket i mean we can argue all day about whether or not that was intentional right. or i'm sure like when they were designing it they weren't imagining some of the specific places people would go when they see there's that. no way you can't think of that when you see it i don't know man i'm just maybe it's just me <laughs> but then, I, yeah, maybe it's just being cynical i don't know maybe but you're then right. you have things like the madam web marketing where right you have just those like for example the strange videos like post on twitter of the actresses like speaking to you like like directly and it's like hold on what what's going on here well part of that marketing was that trailer and we've been talking about trailers a little bit but that that line that was cut out and a lot of movies the biggest things with their marketing is is the information that you get from their trailers whether they mm -hmm. give away a lot of the plot and there are some movies where the whole marketing campaign is dependent on how little the trailer says yeah, about you, the movie and i don't know what you prefer like which one makes you want to see a movie more. For me, typically, if the less information, the more I'm like, oh, I, I'm interested. I don't know if you've had experiences with that. I think I it know. really is a hit or miss, yeah. you know? Sometimes a movie gives you nothing, and then that's a good thing, and yeah. then you go in not knowing, and you get surprised with a fantastic movie. But otherwise, yeah. you know, we've been seeing it more with movie musicals, where they won't market it as a musical, right. and it takes a lot of the audience just... Which can be a mistake sometimes, I think, yeah. I think so, but you know, there's also movies like, with um, Drive-Away Dolls that just came out. Sure. I loved it. And I don't feel like the trailer gave away too much. Of, I agree, like, yeah. And I think that was a great thing. And that was also a trailer that I saw a lot of times if I would go to the movies. And I never really got tired of it because I feel like it didn't give away too much. It wasn't too long. It didn't yeah. belabor but that the could point. Also, that could also easily backfire. Because like, think of the Argyle trailer. That played like nonstop yeah. for like four months. And then it's like, by the time it was done, it was just like, just get it over. And it, would, it became even like a joke, like on yeah. Twitter, everyone was like, it's the number one enemy of the AMC A-list <laughs> user. And it was clearly trying to hide information, and even if it was doing that, even while it was trying to be clever and cryptic, it still was very, became very annoying, because it was so much 
Yeah. I mean, it was talked about, though. You know, everyone wants to know who that real Agent Argyle was. We all, it got we people all talking about the, the whole, movie. Yeah. yeah. But talk not in a good way. Because right. Because by no, the time no. everyone was like, nobody gives a crap about who the real Agent Argyle is because Matthew Vaughn is a hack fraud who only made one good movie, X Men First Class. Okay. Kick Ass was a terrible movie. I mean, I'm inclined to agree with you, but that's a bold statement to make about. Kingsman was a mistake. Okay. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> I feel like every time we sit at this table, some hot, hot some takes, hot takes come get, out. I mean, Matthew Vaughn is take it or leave it to me, but I think that's a that's valid in my in my opinion. I guess that Kingsman isn't very good, but uh, I have no opinion. I church, mean, the church scene's not even that good. <laughs> I feel like that's I haven't seen Kingsman first. But I feel like that's a crazy thing to say. Um, let's talk about the other hand of trailers giving away yes. way too much. You know, we've seen it in. I feel like it's mostly superhero movies. You know, you have like yeah. Batman versus Superman spoiling Wonder Woman. You got Thor Ragnarok giving away the, the big Hulk, Hulk yeah. fight. I don't, I don't, I know it gets people talking. Yeah. But is giving away that kind of, I don't want to call it a cameo because they're a big part of the movie, but like does giving away that big of a character reveal take away from the theater experience? In those cases, and I can't believe I even remember this, I, I, the, the, we knew in advance that like Hulk was gonna be in Ragnarok, Wonder Woman was gonna be in sure. like um, in Batman v Superman. I think a better example, and this is a weird one. There was a movie called there was a Terminator movie, Terminator Genesis, that came out almost a decade ago, uh -huh. and that was an infamous example of a spoiler release in the second trailer. Where do you really care about like spoilers for Terminator I, Genesis? It's, you said it's like You're ten not, years old, right? No, it's, but it's like they reveal that John Connor was actually the villain this time, and he was a Terminator, and that was like right. a big reveal that even the director was like, I didn't want that revealed. I don't know why they had that revealed. And I do think things like that can often be confusing. Like I remember, I do remember seeing that trailer, and, and in situations like that, it's often like, well, if this isn't a twist, then why? Like, how does it factor into the story? You start to think about it too much sometimes in those situations where if it's a piece of information that clearly is a big part of the plot mm. and it's in the marketing, I'm often, it often makes me feel like, oh, if, if I'm supposed to know this going in, then how does this work? How, like, this seems like a confusing movie. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that doesn't make sense, but. No, no, I yeah. think that's a, I think that brings up a really good point. And I, you know, I didn't feel that way with certain movies. And I'm, one in particular that I'm glad didn't reveal, you know, I guess not a big twist, but like, key characters was Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes. I really like that they were kept out of the trailer. And they were know? working really hard to make sure that that was Yeah, because the they, you know, they cut them out of that one scene. Yeah. But I like that they, everyone was theorizing about it and it got people talking, yes. you know. You didn't need to market Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire being there because it was that suspense of, are they gonna be in the movie that right. got people in those seats and returning. And in that case, it's an idea of like, it's a multiverse movie, that's enough. You don't really need that much more than that. And just you can, the hint yeah. of that. And they've been trying to recapture that, I feel like, with yeah. certain movies. And they just, people just love Spider-Man, you know? People, that's, that's true, yeah. You know, that, it's like him and Batman are like the two superheroes. People are just going to show, show up, up no matter what. Mm. You yeah. didn't get that with Doctor Strange, too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I love Doctor Strange. Horror. The comic. Yeah, the, yeah, the first one was great. For me, that the Doctor yeah. Strange 2, I was like Sam Raimi, which in a way has to do with Spider-Man because I was like, I like his Spider-Man yeah. movies. I'll see this. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes back in a way. Well, I mean, I, I definitely think with Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi's direction like carried that. Like yes. it was a terrible, terrible script. This is not gonna look good for my future career prospects. Oh Spider-Man 2? No, no, Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh my okay. God, okay, that's why I, I was like, that's you interesting. scared me. No, Doctor Strange 2, the, the script was terrible, but the sure. directing was really good. Really well directed. He carried that movie know. like how Reddit carries Matthew Vaughn, so. <laughs> You're back to, okay, we're back to straight down Matthew Vaughn. I don't know how much more Matthew Vaughn hates. I don't really think we need to give him the time continue. of day. <laughs> I get that it's not, he's good, but like. We're gonna have like a dartboard with his face on yeah, it in the next episode. Next episode, episode is tuned. all Matthew Vaughn related, the whole variety segment. Um, so. Yeah. Let's do a wrap-up question here. What do we think the future of marketing movies is going to look like? That's a great question. I mean, I think we'll see these trends continue, and I think we'll see people start to get tired of certain things. That's definitely true. Like that's kind of how what our conversation reflects. Yeah. I. I. What I really want to see more of is actors being really candid sure. in their interviews. Like Dakota Johnson. Like Dakota example. Johnson, because she's been very open about the fact that she would not do a movie like Madam Web again. Yeah. And I, I like that. I like when actors are honest with their viewers and you know give their real thoughts on things. And it leads to more like, not memes, but just like more viral moments. Yeah. And it gets people talking. And I think it's a, it's a good way to market. I really do. 
I even agree. though no one's going to see Madame Web because they think it's a good movie, they're going to see people it. involved, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's going to be also more unique types of marketing like, for example, ARGs sure. or, or just interactive media that like makes you feel like you're part of that world. Sort of like how back when The Matrix was at its peak in the early 2000s, they had the whole website and you could like find out lore, find out behind the scenes. I would love to see that come back, like sort of sure. behind the scenes diaries that like Peter Jackson had for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Oh, those are great. So it, it's not really like, you know, giving away too much, but mm -hmm. you're giving just a taste and you're giving a sense of like what's to come. And it's like, hey, you know, just it, it builds that intrigue. That I'd yeah. like to see come back. Definitely. Like imagine like if they ever make another Star Wars movie, you know, you got the director you coming did. up and just being like, you know, check out this concept art, check out these sets. And, sure. You know, that would be, instead of just the constant unnecessary secrecy, yeah. like no spoilers obviously, but like, I think if people know that this person went to a sandwich shop, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. You ever had the the diary of a wimpy kid do it, like movie book? Yes. <laughs> About all the Definitely. scenes. Yeah, I want I want that back. All right. Well, now over to Dante with the news. Welcome back to the news corner. In today's news, Francis Ford Coppola's newest hundred million dollar film, Megalopolis, which Coppola funded himself partially through his wine company, has set its sights on a major fall release in IMAX. The sci-fi drama follows an architect who aims to build New York City into utopia after being hit by a major disaster, and has been in the works since the 1980s. Director Sam Mendes has announced that he is planning on directing four different Beatles biopics focused on each member of the band. All films have a theater release in 2027, distributed by Apple and Sony. Director Xavier Dolan has been selected as the head of the Cannes Film Festival jury in May. Dolan has received multiple prizes at Cannes in his past four films, Mommy 2014 and It's Only the End of the World 2016, as well as being part of the jury in 2015. In a recent Vanity Fair interview for the promotion of Dune Part 2, Stellan Skarsgård explained that while filming Mamma Mia, that he and the co-stars had to be the bimbos on the production. He elaborated that all he had to do on set was be cute and act silly, following the physical releases of three Disney Plus originals back in 2023. Disney has announced the next lineup of their collector's editions, being the first season of Andor, Moon Knight, and The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as well as Obi-Wan Kenobi. All four of these titles will be released in 4K, Ultra, HA, Blu-ray, and never been, never been seen in Steelbooks, concept art, behind the scene content. These releases coming at the same time as many studios are cutting their physical media divisions show that there may still be hope for the physical media fans out there that you can be order all these titles for the release on April 30th. Those are all the news stories for this episode, but debuting this episode is our first Extra Emerson recommended film in every new episode from now on. We'll recommend a new movie every episode that you may never heard of before. This episode's movie is Elaine May, Mikey, and Nikki from 1976. You have fantastic performances from Peter Falk and John Kasovitz, running a narrative that makes you feel the panic and confusion of these characters while you watch their long-term friendship collapse. Check it out. Now over to our field reporter, Gianna. Hi guys, my name is Gianna. And have you ever heard of real or cake? Well, I have, but that's not what we're doing today. We're doing real or fake, where we name a bunch of real movies and a bunch of fake movies. And everyone has to guess which ones are real and which ones are not. Let's see what people say, because we have some crazy things upcoming. All right, so our first movie is called Tiger Cruise, a Disney Channel original film. In the wake of the World Trade Center attacks, a naval carrier with civilians on board is ordered in combat mode. And do you think that movie is real, or do you think that movie is fake? Ooh, um... Oh man, it sounds like something I, I would want to see. <laughs> That better not be real. Actually, I, I think that it's too good to be true and I'm gonna say it's not real. I mean, you said the Disney. I don't know of this Disney movie, per chance, but I'm gonna say it's real. It is real. Okay, Disney, go you, I guess. The next movie is called Finding Jesus 2. Um, join faith-fueled friends, muggles, and joy as they visit a beautiful, Finding Jesus Bay, a place where Christian stories are told night and day. Guided by the sea's best storyteller, they hear all about the endless kindness and boundless of their creator. Then they go together forth to spread his, world, his word and make a, their world a better place. Um, fake? Real? Because I feel like this is some like random like a film that like someone like just made and like posted onto YouTube or something. 
Um, I think this one's real too. And why do you think it's real? Because I have heard of Finding Jesus, the Finding Nemo ripoff movie, and I'm pretty sure there's a sequel to it, so... Real? It is real. It is a sequel to Finding Jesus 1. Have you seen Finding Jesus? I haven't, but I guess now it's on my watch list. Now that I'm speaking about its sequel, so I feel like it's only in my right to watch the first one. Collateral Beauty. Retreating from life after a tragedy, a man, Will Smith, um, questions the universe by writing to love, time, and death. When the physical embodiments of these three elements begin to visit him, he begins to see how these things interlock and even loss can reveal moments of meaning and beauty. <laughs> um, wow, this sounds like a Will Smith movie, I think. Um, oh man, but the last two have been real. So why would you give me a third real one? I don't know. I don't, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's not real. Um, I think it's fake because the logline seems like too descriptive almost. <laughs> well, that movie is real. Oh, it is a Will Smith film. <laughs> Good for him for getting a job, you know? He's really underground. Hunter, um, Nicolas Cage's Hunter, a secluded lodger building his cabin in the Canadian wilderness when he and his orphaned nephew realize they haven't established their land in the heart of Bear County, they must fight a pack of bears to save their lives. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna spice this up and say it's not real. I don't wanna get all three wrong, but I'm just gonna say it's real because the other ones are real. It's a fake, isn't it? It's fake. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Okay, one final question. If you were to make a movie, what would you call it? Um, getting interviewed by X. Emerson and then getting all the answers wrong. That's a really good <laughs> title. It'd be a parody on a bug's life called A Pug's Life about a pug because pugs are superior. It would be called um, If a Squirrel Could Fly. Do you want an explanation for that? If you wish, if you have one. Okay, because you know how there's flying squirrels out there? I feel like they, like, and they, like, I feel like they would, like, meet, like, regular squirrels and then, like, birds. And then, you know, they do the, you know, I think, you know. I think we should pitch that to EIV, so. Yeah, maybe, anyway. maybe, I'll, maybe I'll pitch it um, next fall, who knows. All right, so there are our answers and there are our movies. And if I think I learned anything from this, is that I need to start watching Tiger Cruise because what the heck is that? Anyway, if I had my own film, I think it would be called The D is Fire. But the D is on fire, <laughs> the letter D. You dirty rascals. Thanks, Gianna. In the spirit of the fake movies we asked our fellow students, we've decided to create some fake movies of our own. Using this handy dandy generator, each of us will be given a director, two actors, and a film property. We then have to create a film based off of what's been generated, drawing a poster, and coming up with a quick summary of the plot. Let's get started. So Anthony's up first here. All right. You're getting... Hey, it's out of my control. <laughs> Did you yeah, think you were, oh, Ari Aster, Ari Aster. Paul, Giamatti. Paul Giamatti, Austin Butler. <laughs> oh the my gosh, that and might the be the third best are a prompt great I've match. ever seen. I don't know Holy how that, shit. Is how that comp computes, but okay. I You've got to do a great okay. job. Okay, all right, I'm up now. At least I didn't get Simu Liu. At least you know <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm so oh, this is really exciting. excited for I cannot this. wait. <laughs> I'm really like... I can't draw, which oh, is the oh, worst part. Oh. Me neither. Okay. Sorry. Oh, Baz Luhrmann, Toby McGuire. McGuire. They've done a movie together. Willem Dafoe. Oh, Willem Dafoe. Great Gatsby. <laughs> oh my god. So they did do I'm Great Gatsby together, this, uh, so they've worked together. I haven't watched a single Power Rangers That's thing ever. That's a strange ever. reunion, Spider-Man reunion. Yeah. How do I, who, who's, oh, Willem Dafoe. I was like, did Baz Luhrmann do Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Green Goblin, that didn't even occur. Green Goblin. Oh, okay. Okay. Quentin Tarantino, okay, that's. All oh three Olsons, Brenda Song <laughs> in an <laughs> alien movie. <laughs> oh my God, please make Brenda Song the alien. That's, please. of course, thank you for that. That is I already forgot clue. who all of mine were. This I'm gonna be so, so real. interesting to me. <laughs> okay, I got this. I'm gonna write that down. I, I, gonna write, I yeah. should've written that down. Um, QT. Okay, okay. 
Alien. David Alien Lynch, film? okay. Donald, Donald Glover. Donald Glover's Olsen. a good one. Michael Jackson. With Michael Jackson. And High School Musical. Oh, Brenda okay. Stan. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Are you kidding Where me? Where does David Lynch come into play? High School uh, Musical. Go find out. Just, I already forgot. Tobey Maguire. Now we just go. Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I forgot what Donald Glover looks like. Oh my God. Power Rangers. Who was my director? Your director? It's Baz Luhrmann. It was Baz Luhrmann, yeah. Is it, ba is it Baz? Baz or Baz? I don't know. I, we have both pronunciations on it on, the, on record. Wait, do we create a title or no? Or do we go off the title? It's a, you're making High School Musical. Oh. <laughs> you do whatever you so want. So the fourth one, okay, the new one. Or the remake of the first one, whatever you choose. No. No? <laughs> Did you just straight up know me? That was... I know. <laughs> I don't know how I... Mm, bad start. Oh, God, my hair is so bad. I don't know what a Power Rangers mask looks like. I need the black. Can you finish? No. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Do they have a big, do the Power Rangers have a big mech? Like, I feel like they do, right? Are you thinking of Voltron? I might be thinking of Voltron. Do I, they have a mech? They do. I really don't know what this looks like, what the Power Rangers do. I was not allowed to watch this growing up. How do I draw Michael Jack? I remember the... <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a hat. I love that question. Give him the glove, right? He's got the glove and the, like, the, the, the the fedora, that's the word I'm looking for. This fedora. is not a Power Ranger. I don't know what this is. I'll be so real. And, um, it's really, I feel like it's hard to get a direct, oh, you're done. Yep. Okay. I, oh, he's done. He's I feel like it's hard to get a director across in the poster, but that may just be me like really struggling with I, this prop. I honestly have no idea who David Lynch is. Uh, what are we talking about? The killer. Please. Oh, that's not the killer. The killer? <laughs> no, the killer. <laughs> no, I like. I like that. That's not, you're not saying a movie. That's who he is. <laughs> He's the killer. <laughs> that is. Yeah, I was like, that is definitely not him. But, but so I close. am not qualified to be Twin, in the seat. You got. Oh God. He did Twin Peaks. He did Eraserhead. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, shoot. I don't know. I, we're done. <laughs> I was not barely done. Barely made it through. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I was not Fuck. done. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that uh, someone I'm start the, presenting. I was at least for uh, who's who's done? Uh, Cut Anthony knock, is done. I, I did not get to draw Michael Jackson. I thought we had ten minutes, not no, two. We had five seconds. Okay, let me draw Michael Jackson. Oh, I missed that part of the prompt. Okay. Are you ready? Wait, wait, hang on. Mine's so bad. <laughs> Out of rush. You start start us off. Start us off. Okay. Can I get a That's uh, that's meant to be the moon. And I just figured that if it was Ari Aster, oh, God. it'd be like a horror movie. So a new breed in terror, and then you got the acknowledgement that it's meant to be, you know, who it's starring. And then I guess you could interpret, <laughs> if you're being generous, that the moon looking like a sad face, or me after a Saturday night, that's how, that's <laughs> what it is. Are you okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> you concern me. Anyway, is he okay? Ari Aster's Twilight, starring Paul Giamatti and... Austin Butler coming, hope to God, not near a theater near you, maybe on Peacock. Huh? Peacock. <laughs> just fell off. Oh just my fell. God. Okay. <laughs> so, I, let me preface this. I've never seen a Power Rangers movie in my life. I don't even know if they, I think there was one movie. Um, so I don't know what they look like. This is supposed to be a Power Ranger. <laughs> and I couldn't think of what Willem Dafoe characters character would look like. Goblin? So I did just draw the Green Goblin. He's, he, he came back to life. And apparently they have mechs, so this is like a little robot <laughs> triceratops. You got thoughts? Um, I would, this is just Spider-Man 1. I like the Green Goblin. It's just Spider-Man 1, Spider 1 with Spider 1. a robot triceratops. There should be other team members, but they get, it's like an Avenger situation where they come in at the end, like a post credit scene. Um, it sets up a new universe titled Power Rangers. And <laughs> no, like, you know, like this, it's like the MCU, but PW, this no, PRU, oh, okay. Peru. Okay. And um, the Baz Luhrmann twist is Lana Del Rey does the soundtrack. That's a, that's a great, I, great I, I pull. Her say go, go Power Rangers, you know? Like, I think she could do a good job. <laughs> okay. That's so, not even a poster. You just wrote words. I just wrote words. I yeah. didn't have time to do any drawings. At the, and I just slapped some on there, but this is, 
I decided to, it's the not so final film by Quentin Tarantino because he says he's done, but he's not because he's got one more in him and it's, it's uh, Alien meet, Mar meets Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen and Elizabeth's not so happy to be there. That's why she's frowning. And the alien, I made the word alien green and I was gonna draw Xenomorph but then I got shy so I scratched it out because I don't shy. think I could draw Xenomorph in this amount of time. Um, but yeah, you know, he had to come back for this because it's important to cinematic history. Um, Brenda Song is alien meets Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen and Elizabeth. That's, That's fantastic. Pitch. It's like a classic Mary Kate movie, except there's an alien. Now, what is what is Brenda? Is it Brenda Song just doing the mocap? Does she have lines? She's in the full practical suit and she has lines. That's fantastic. She speaks from within the suit. Is it alien garble or is it English? No, she like becomes friends with the. She oh. meets them. She doesn't fight them. There's no conflict. Like she's like, <laughs> she's the Mary Kate no boy. So there, yeah, she's the yes. She's the boy. She's the boy. And they so make it's out. There and, yeah, and they make out. So it's wait. Hold on. I will be watching. I don't think that's legal. <laughs> I think it is. Um, they're well, adults. It's a xenomorph. They're 30 oh, years oh, old. Right. And they're adults now. Is that zoophilia? I thought. You know, let's change the subject. <laughs> Okay, Dante, what are you doing? So, I bet you guys always wanted a High School Musical 4 with Michael Jackson. Who says no? I mean, he's not alive, but who says no? <laughs> you know, I drew two sick figures. It's not the greatest Are ride. they holding hands? They are. I, I try to do something else, but they David are. Lynch in the movie? They are. Dave Lynch is not in the movie. Okay. Now, I meant, I meant to draw them better, but I realized we were done, so I draw two sick figures, but Michael Jackson, he was a great actor. Is that the movie that he acted in? <laughs> was he? Incredible thing to say about did, Michael Jackson. What, what did he act in? Uh, uh, Thriller music video. Oh, Count. you know what? Count. The Wiz. The, the Wiz. Wiz. <laughs> the Wiz. The Wiz. Sidney Lumet's The Wiz. Oscar loser, The Wiz. And Donald Glover is, wow. is going to sing This is America in the movie. That's going to be the opening act. All right. <laughs> who, wait, who played? Are, are they like huh? Troy and Gabriella recast? <laughs> are they like, uh, no, they however, play? this one takes place after the third one, and I didn't watch the third one, so I don't know how that ended, but they are. They are just teachers at the school. We'll use that. Okay. They're okay. dance teachers. They're coaching a dance team. <laughs> and they fall in love while they teach. Yes. I love that. It's a great. It's a great. Who says really no? Go Wildcats. Who says like, no? I'm in. You are not versed on your High School Musical. Yeah, you gotta watch High School Musical three. I didn't watch. I didn't watch any of them. Okay. But which one? Here's the real question. Even though your poster's somewhere down there, which one is getting nominated for Best Picture? Michael Jackson, baby. Maybe. I think this has the most prestige. Honestly, probably, yeah. It's that one's. Probably but Spider Man <laughs> won again. It's That's upside true. down. This I gets think. the audience. Well this is the popular, most popular, probably. That's true. I would say. Ever, yeah. Baz Luhrmann's Power Rangers. But superhero movies don't get nominated for Best Picture. That's true. Unless. Unless. Well, Black Panther did. That's an exception. Anthony, it's upside Please down. Please turn your posters upside down. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. going, it's going to bed. You're ruining the bit. OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, how dare you? I, I was being on. asked to ruin the bit. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm in, I'm in for this bit. I think Upside Down gets it, the win. Honestly. OK, so that's winning best it's picture. It's like, whoa, Ari Aster, that's, that's so deep. OK. An Upside Down movie poster? Who says no? Sure. You get best picture. <laughs> You're welcome, Ari Aster. I won your Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all we, sound very that's all we got on this episode. I'm done. I'm done. And then. I think one of these is the most obvious choice for that's best picture. Bias, you know. Congrats to the actual winner. Maria is the Oppenheimer. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>